Well, hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to a new episode of He Said, He Said, He Said, a look at the world from a seasoned black man's perspective. Please, please forgive us. This is a live show, and so anything that can go wrong will go wrong. So we apologize for coming on late tonight, but welcome to our show this Friday, December the, uh, the 3rd. I'm the 2nd. I'm sorry. Um, I hope everyone is feeling well and doing good. Um, our show tonight is Holiday Luxury Dining, and we have brought back one of our favorites, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Chef Cottrell. Actually, I was going to say it's with us, but I am with her. I am in, uh, in her kitchen tonight, and we're going to be talking to her about Holiday Luxury Dining, and uh, we are so excited about the show. Uh, hope everyone, like I said, has had a good week. Um, let me see. Let me see. Um, for many of you who don't know, tomorrow is the 30th year, the 30th anniversary of texting. That's right. Texting is 30 years, ladies and gentlemen. Um, tomorrow, on December 3rd in 1992, a gentleman by the name of Neil Papworth, he texted one, uh, two words, Merry Christmas, and it went around the world. And one year later in 1993, Nokia introduced an SMS feature with a distinctive beat to signal an incoming message. That's right. Hey, Rose, how you doing? Thank you for joining the show tonight. And um, I, I want to take a moment to, um, you know, send up prayers to, you know, one of our favorite weathermen, uh, Al Roker. Um, he's one of the, the most favorite of uh, famous weathermen that that weathermen that we know on TV. Uh, he was rushed back to the hospital the day after Thanksgiving amid uh, ongoing health scare due to blood clots. And, uh, you know, just being personal with you guys, I, I know what that's like. Um, I, I had um, blood clots of in, in 2013, ladies and gentlemen, and, and I, I made it through, didn't know how it happened. So we are wishing him well. He has never missed the Thanksgiving parade. And it was the first time in 27 years that he had to do that because of his health. So we want to pray, uh, send up a prayer for Al Roker. Also, another health scare or uh, some, something that we, I want to share with you all, Sinbad. Many of you uh, are finding out like me that two years ago, Sinbad had a stroke. And um, he has recently gotten out of the hospital. Um, he was in the hospital for nearly, uh, you know, nine months. And from what we understand, he is fighting every inch of his life. So send up your prayers. And Blair Underwood, uh, the actor Blair Underwood, posted uh, on Monday that, um, that we send in some donations to Sinbad because his insurance had run out. And ladies and gentlemen, you know, again, don't, don't judge. I will say this. It happens, but we need to open our, our ears and our eyes, uh, particularly in this industry, um, that the alarm has been sound, that the need for adequate health care for everyone is imminent, and, and we need to pay attention to that. So prayers for Sinbad. And last but not least, on a, on a happy note, Billy Porter. That's right. Billy Porter got his walk of fame uh, uh, actually on yesterday, and uh, they... It was announced in 2019, actually, that they were going to do it. But because of the pandemic, uh, they pushed it back. And so kudos to Billy Porter for getting your Hollywood Walk of Fame, my brother. You know, well, well deserved. He has been doing his thing. Well, um, again, thank you all for being there. Hey, Sean. Hey, Rose. I saw you guys. There. Hey, Jocelyn. Oh, my God. But what? This is my fragrance girl, ladies and gentlemen. OK, that's all I'm going to say to that. Hey, Judy. Hey, Alma. Um, but look. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready for the chat. Now, you know I can't do that with my two co without my two co-hosts. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Vosh Bodie and Mr. Bobby Edwards. Hey, <laughs> how you guys doing? Doing great. <laughs> I I, I couldn't get over the new background, your new chair. You're with Cottrell. That's I amazing. Am, I am with Cottrell. Bobby, um, I think you need to take yourself off of mute. Um, I think uh, there you go. There, there you go. Because we, we want to hear you. We want to hear you. Yes. Are yes. you checking out my background? Yes. And the tree next to you, all of it. 
It's fabulous. Fabulous. And in fact, someone even actually mentioned it in one of the chat uh, messages that uh, they like the chair. Well, well, Judy. Hey, Judy. Hey, Judy. Well, look, Judy, is is Judy here? Is Judy local? Oh, she's in California. She is in California. She's in Oakland and just got back from a trip to Africa. So she went back to the motherland. Uh, uh. Well, Judy, Judy, if you (laughs) ever come to D.C., look, you have to come and have brunch with Chef Cottrell. That is a must. And, and, and when you come, maybe we can get Vosh down here too um, because we need to do that. Bobby, you, 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 you've, done, you've done your thing. You, you've been here. I've been there. I'm still trying to figure out why I'm not there with you tonight, but that's a whole nother s- subject. So. Well, you know, I'm so doing the show tonight. We will get on with that. Okay, <laughs> I, I'm sure we, we will find that out. But um, look, uh, last week I made the announcement that um, it was my high school reunion. Mm-hmm. And ladies and gentlemen, Bobby and... Uh, uh, this Darren Bosch, they they made me do something that I don't normally do. They made me pull out some pictures. So well, we thought if you were going back for your reunion, I mean, we want to know. We want to know how it was, and 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 the viewers need to see what was Alvin like back in high school. Well, okay, okay. Just to make my co-host happy, here's some some images from the um, reunion, uh, McKinley Tech High School in D.C. All the classes were there. I mean, it was phenomenal. There had to be close to, you know, 800 to 1,000 people there um, at the Martin's Crosswinds in, in, in Maryland. Um, I saw some of my old friends that, you know, this is my date, Karen. We, we've been friends since uh, the 10th grade. And uh, she's just a beautiful spirit. She was there. And I, I used to be um, work closely with the cheerleaders. This is Cheryl Catlett. She was one of the cheerleaders. And this is uh, Angela. Angela's like a style maven these days, ladies and gentlemen. Right. So it was just uh, amazing. And this woman here, Vita Glenn, Vita, if you're watching, she was the most beautiful woman, and she still is, in my class. And wow. she's still holding, holding together, sweetheart. Um, nice. But it was it was an amazing night um, to be with friends and stuff, and so so it was an all alumni reunion. It wasn't just your your graduating class. It was mm-hmm. all McKinley Tech uh, all, graduates. All McKinley Tech, and they went all the way back to 1955. Wow! wow. And 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 even one of my um, uh, one of the teachers were there also. So Excellent. you know that, that it, it was really fun. So and also, okay, ladies and gentlemen, they made me go down memory lane and pull these pictures out. You gotta do it. And Ooh, they, 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 <laughs> they, they wanted to see what I look like in high school. Uh, are you all hearing the theme song to Shaft that I'm hearing right now? Seriously. Seriously. Now. And the hair, you had hair Ooh, for days. I, 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 I had hair for days. And, days. you know, I was doing my thing. You know, I was a little chubby kid. So, you know, I was doing my thing. And so, uh, if my producer can go ahead and speed those pictures up, this is my best girlfriend now. Uh, Stephanie, Stephanie, I met her as soon as I walked through the door, um, seventh grade, and we are, we're still friends right she now. Is a sweetheart, um, sweetheart. Amazing. This is one of the talent shows I was going to be in. We thought we were chic. Come on now. And yes, all are. of these people were at the reunion. All, oh, oh good. So you, you all should have recreated that picture. That was Seriously. Amazing. Child, I couldn't catch up. This, this is me and <laughs> one, one of my moments. You know, I, you know, I was a dancer, so you know, oh, I, I, I used Lordy. to do that. And uh, it's the socks for me. <laughs> uh, okay, and this is when I ran for Mr. McKinley. Um, you know, and this was uh, my girlfriend at the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, yes, Karen, and we're still good friends. And this was my high school picture. Oh, so, come on now, come on! And in, in front of the world's largest chocolate bar. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> but, but then when I when I left school, I had to show them what I was well, working with. Well, 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 <laughs> man. Yeah. No this, is what, this is what I have be- This is what I became. Oh. Okay. And, and so what, you got big up when you standing in front of one of those cutout things. <laughs> <laughs> all I'm going to say is we can move on past this. Thank you all for indulging me. Actually, in this. I, this is quite the image here. Um, well, yeah. <laughs> Yes, and now he's single. Oh Lord, <laughs> Jesus! He said, he said, he said. Yes, he said. <laughs> can, we, can we move on, please? Thank you all for letting me do this and share. This Thank you for sharing this, Alvin. We really Absolutely. appreciate the vulnerability. I, I appreciate it. We had to give you a little bit of grief about that, but thank you. We do want to move on. <laughs> we want to move on to a couple of other topics, including the fact that you know American politics right now has really been quite divisive, and there there are often few glimmers of hope that we see, but history is still being made. And it happened this past Wednesday with the uh, 
the, the House Democrats ushered in a whole new generation of leadership in naming House Minority Leader Representative Hakeem Jeffries, who was elected the first Black American to head a major political party in Congress as long-serving Speaker Nancy Pelosi and her team will soon step aside. This is big. Uh, never has any either of the any major political party uh, been led by an African American, and uh, you know obviously um, he is a relatively young man. He's fifty two years old from New York, and he is committed to all. He keeps saying is he is working to do to be committed to getting things done. Uh, he is willing to work across the aisle um, because it's about making progress mm -hmm. and. And obviously, and I thank you, Alvin, for giving me this opportunity to just kind of give a quick shout out to the fact that Hakeem is also a member of Kappa Alpha Psi. Uh, he is one of my fraternity brothers, so we are particularly <laughs> excited. Yo, we'll give him the big yo, 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 yo. Uh, excited about uh, Representative Jeffries in this leadership role. And we also salute the legacy and the long tradition of Nancy Pelosi. I think it is, it is quite um, noted that, that, that we will go from uh, Nancy Pelosi in that role to Hakeem Jeffrey. So history being made. Congratulations, Hakeem Jeffrey. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure he, he will do us proud. Thank you, Bobby. Yeah. Thank Super you. Super excited. Uh, <laughs> I know. Give it to him one more time. Uh, <laughs> yo, yo. <laughs> yeah. Well, other, other historic things have happened. Um, the House of Representatives passed HR 8404, which is known as the uh, same-sex marriage bill, but its official name is the Act to Repeal the Defense of Marriage Act and ensure respect for state regulations of marriage mm -hmm. and for other purposes. It's the other purposes that's going to come back up on mm -hmm. us. Uh, it, I know, right? So it passed uh, 61 to 36, 61 Democrats, 36 Republicans, and yeah. now the bill goes into the House where it is assumed that it will pass and then be passed on to Biden to be signed into law. Mm -hmm. Now, some of the Republicans who actually did vote for the bill held out until there were provisions put into the bill mm -hmm. that would make it so that people would have exemptions based on religious freedoms, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and it basically states that anybody who is in a, or works with, or any, institution that is putting forward religion, whether it be a school, a synagogue, a mosque, et cetera, et cetera, that they would not be required to provide any goods or services for the celebration or the solemnization of any of these marriages. Excellent. And if they wow. did not choose to participate in these acts, that they could not be sued or lose their taxes of status or mm -hmm. any benefits for not recognizing these units. So on one hand, it feels really great and really fabulous that this right. is passed because now these marriages are safe. Every state is going to have to recognize other states' unions uh, and they will receive the federal tax benefits and all the other benefits that go along with marriage. So kudos, kudos, kudos. Kudos, Absolutely. kudos, kudos. Well, kudos. Um, thank you. Yeah, that, that, that was actually good to hear. But like you said, everything comes with a cost. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. so we have to keep our eyes open. Um, I'm going to round out this, this chat, ladies and gentlemen, because, because we are, you know, we're talking about the holiday show and we're talking about food. I love to cook. And, you know, and we talked about a couple of weeks ago, we talked about Christmas lights and how we were just, some of us were just annoyed that Christmas lights was up too early. Well, you know, I just want to ask everybody who's watching, have you ever gone to the grocery store <laughs> and, and you go to go to pick up, you know, get your vegetables or whatever, and you got to grab one of those plastic bags and you can't open it? Is Our, that, it is amazing that you, you are so overwhelmed by these plastic bags. It is annoying AF. OK, and I, it is annoying to sit there. And and I think someone told me, well, just wet your hands or just fit your hands. Yeah, it was I, me. If you just get your fingers moist, <laughs> like just my... touch, touch a, a, like a piece of produce and <laughs> okay. it's got moisture on it, touch it and just it'll open. I, 
I think, I think that's right, Rodney. See, Rodney know what I'm talking about. Like, oh you know, my God. You know, you, you just want to grab a bag, open it, put your stuff in it, and leave. That doesn't happen. I don't want to beat this dead horse, but I just had, you know, you know, the thought of like, you know, having a cooking show and have to prep and get ready for cooking. That is the one thing that get on my nerves. Well, okay? <laughs> to have to go to the store to do that. I just the, have to get that out of my chat. Seat. Seems to suggest that you are not alone. There are people who are. <laughs> Who chiming in and they're like saying they join you. And... They, they... Well, hopefully we have helped them all. <laughs> well, you you have Just to get know. your fingers a little damp. Touch it like you know a piece of parsley or something. Your fingers moist and then squeeze, pinch. They open up. We're talking about plastic bags now, Vaughn. <laughs> well, you know it works for many. Things. Okay, okay, okay. No, oh my thank lord! You, thank you, thank oh you, Rodney. I'm God. looking around to see who's watching Dis me. But disclaimer: I, I had nothing to do with that. I am going to thank you all for understanding how I feel on that because I, I know it. If, if, if it happens to me, it has to happen to you. And that's gonna be one of our taglines. If, oh, if it's happening to us, it gotta be happening to you. This but is anyway. not the cooking segment <laughs> that we are gonna be talking about. <laughs> I, I, I want to take a step aside from that because uh, I usually have <laughs> solutions. <laughs> well, well, mm. <laughs> Are y'all ready to get on with this show yes, tonight? Yes, because yes. I'm I'm here and it smells amazing in wow. here, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm just I, I ain't trying to you know stick a yes, you, you know are. Yes, I'm not I'm not. But look, our special guest tonight. Uh, actually, you met her last year when we brought her on for the first time in in July for the Fourth of July. And we had a cooking show, and I made those god awful balls that didn't look like hers. <laughs> and then we we brought her back in February for the um for the Valentine's Day show and you all just loved her. And many of you from this show have become, have made her your chef for, for whatever reason. And I definitely thank you for that. Tonight, she is back and I am with her, ladies and gentlemen. Let's welcome back for the holiday uh, luxury dining show, none other than Chef Cottrell. Chef Cottrell, Chef Cottrell. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hi. It's so good to see you. Yeah. Oh my God. Okay, so it feels like it's been forever, first of it, all. But it, thank you for having me back. Control, it has been forever. Alvin, as Alvin said, you haven't been with us since February. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we had you on twice last year. You were around mm -hmm. the, yeah. the holidays. So it is only befitting that we bring you back to have you talk to us about luxury dining and any points and, and tips you can give us to help us make our lives as fabulous as yours seems to be. Aw, hmm. thanks, Vash. Can I just add something, though? Yes. You are the only one that has not been here. I know. I know. I know. i just let that marinate for a minute. It, look, it's already a point of contention. I'm so sad. <laughs> and I, I, you know what? In 2023, I am coming to see you. Okay. And okay. And I don't want to just have you cook for me. I want us to go out. Someone else can cook. And I want to talk to you because I yes. absolutely adore you. And I have lots of things I want to talk to you about. That's sweet. That's sweet. I love it. I all, love right for, all right for lobbying for control. Okay. <laughs> and, and I can't get mad because the only way that I had the pleasure of actually being in that space and meeting Chef Cottrell was through Alvin. So I, you know, I can't. Y'all been making me feel real celebrity esque up on here. <laughs> you deserve it. We love you, and you are truly a he said he said fan favorite. People Absolutely. love you, and Absolutely. I hope they show you during the course of this hour. And, and you don't show. You got good visuals too. Oh yeah, yeah yes you do. <laughs> so let's get on with the show. I know you have three points, and. Um, We'll start wherever, wherever you want to start. Mm -hmm. So, uh, forgive me, because I kept looking over, forgetting that Alvin's, like, right here. He's, like... <laughs> He's literally, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, it's yeah, a so I have three great points that I want to, like, talk to you guys about. And let's talk about smell first. Can we get into that? Yeah. Because um, I'm big on smells. Uh, I think that... Food should, I think as soon as you walk into a room or a, a restaurant, you should feel like, mm, this is going to be good, right? So let's mm -hmm. talk luxury dining, luxury cuisine, if we will. Mm -hmm. Alan and I were talking uh, prior to about 
luxury, what is luxury smells? What is luxury like um, food smell like? And I was like, okay, well, chitlins. Right. That that's not like uh, that doesn't feel luxury. It's become a high level cuisine, but it doesn't smell yeah. like you know. <laughs> One of the things that I asked the trail when we got together was, you know, are there certain foods that you can walk into a room and 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 say luxury that that they scream luxury? And I mean, I've gone to a lot of places where things smell good, but. I don't know if I could call them luxury. I could say luxury. Yes, so I'm gonna say it depends on everyone's palate, right? Everybody's palate is different. So let me describe, because I don't wanna get no hate mail, like, um, <laughs> are you raised this luxury for you, sis? Not my palate, though. <laughs> so I'm gonna go with, um, I love mussels. I love, um, surprisingly, I love anything seafood. If it's cooked right, the smell, there, there shouldn't be a stench or a foul smell in seafood. If there is, then we need to like throw it away and start from scratch because that means the seafood was bad altogether. Mm -hmm. So I think for my palate, it's seafood. I'll even take a little surf and turf in there, um, wow. cooked right, medium, preferably. Anybody want to <laughs> dinner with me? Anything mm -hmm. over medium, I'm not, I'm not dining with you. Mm -hmm. um, and, but those are some of the things for luxury dining that everyone would love. Everyone loves a good crab cake, uh, Chilean sea bass, drizzled with like butter garlic. Um, we could do a pasta, a shrimp pasta, which I have here. So we're going to be partaking. Can we, can we dine in? We have, well, Alvin, let me tell you how it is. So uh, let, let me ask you about, and I'm going to say this. I have gone, gone to some, some places, places that are pretty high brow, brow, and I would smell beer. And that does not work for me. You smell beer? Yeah, it, it, would, it would. Are you walking by the bar? Yes. <laughs> okay. I hate the smell, smell of beer. beer. Well, you know what? Sometimes people cook with beer. Like we cook crabs in beer, you, you cook with beer, it, it actually adds a lot of flavor. So again, this is like according to your palate. If you can get beyond the smell, the restaurant was amazing, I'm sure, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think sometimes we just gotta like dig through. Um, so let's start here. I think people eat with their eyes first. So if I'm looking at something, I already know it's gonna be good based off of how it looks. All right. Uh, now, if you've, if you've disappointed me because you can't cook out with the crab cakes, <laughs> that's another story. However, people eat with their eyes first. If you see something and it comes, they serve you your plate and you're like, hmm, this is gonna be good. Shoulders get to move in, because you know that lobster is gonna be good. Right? Yeah. Looks appetizing, so people eat with their eyes first. So presentation is key when when you are you know entertaining. You want it to look nice. You want the presentation to look like I want all of this. I want it all. So help me with that with that, Coachella, because I mean, you, let's say you cook something really groovy, You've got these great little components. They may all look good in the pot, but how, what's the secret to making it look good once it makes it to the table? Mm. So, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to hurt someone's feelings, but it's just <laughs> <not good. laughs> yes. if, Let me say this. If you can't cook, don't try to entertain. Okay. Let's start there. Don't try to entertain. Order. But don't say you made it from scratch. Okay. <laughs> um, but order out. Right? If you, and let me rephrase that because I don't want people to say, well, I love to entertain and I can't cook. Then just order. Um, but you definitely can't say you made that from scratch when you ordered it from the Amazon. Or they could pick up the phone and, and or go to their computer and go to chefcontrol.com. But my right. question is like, you make food and it looks great in the pot. Yeah. Is there a secret to putting it on the plate to make it look even better? Oh, like presentation, like plate presentation. presentation. Yeah, Absolutely. like what is the, so yeah. When you are on smaller plates, like if you were dining for a party of seven or a party of eight, make sure that your 
plate options, meaning like whatever you're plating, is an odd number. It is scientifically proven that everyone's eye is attracted to an odd number. So, and you'll see this next time you go to a fine dining restaurant, you'll be like, oh my God, there's five scallops, or there's okay. three. They'll never be four, they'll never be six. It will always be an odd number. It looks better okay. on a plate, right? Because you can kind of stack an odd number as opposed to just two, four, six, eight. Okay. Does that make sense? So there's yes. room for like, the presentation of things. Sure. So if you are doing something for a smaller group, then make sure it's an odd number. Does that answer your question, Kosh? Yes, it's definitely taking me to the point where I have to think about how I put it on the plate and not just think, oh, it looks good in the pot. I can just throw it on the plate any way that I want and it's still going yeah. to appeal to someone's visual. Okay. Yeah. And then <laughs> try with the sauces. Try to put the sauce on the base of a plate as opposed to just drizzling it on top. Okay. So for example, if you have a, if you have three crab balls, <laughs> I'm just saying, if you have three crab balls, you're putting the sauce to make it a, a, a luxury dining experience with those crab balls. You are putting the three, and I'm doing it with my hands because I want to make sure I get it right. I got three crab balls and I'm putting them on top of the, um, what do you call it? The, the dressing or whatever. The sauce. The sauce. He called it dressing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like it was salad, y'all. <laughs> like, wait. <laughs> oh, Lord. Like it was stuffing. <laughs> okay. Um, so you got three. <laughs> I'm going to try. I'm going to try to take it away. Oh, my God. I'm so glad that wasn't me. That <laughs> you have three crab balls stacked in, in, in the form of a pyramid, right? And <laughs> you Great. take whatever cream, whatever sauce that you're it's using. Really yes. um, take a spoon, dab it on the plate, take the back of the spoon and scrape it. Mm. That's what we do. Mm -hmm. And then you'll stack the crab balls on top. So take a spoon, a spoonful, like a tablespoon, dab your sauce or your cream, and then take the back of the spoon and scrape the plate. Got it it will be beautiful presentation. Sprinkle some parsley over there, fresh parsley. We've gone through this before. Fresh, 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 <laughs> not the fake. And and then stack your crab balls. Okay. But not in your dressing. Now I see that uh, Lewis Smith said something earlier. I want to see what, what 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 did Lewis say? He said that his mother <laughs> used to say that no matter how good it is, if it looks like oh Lewis, a dollar sign. And that other, those other, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> nobody's going to eat it. Yeah. <laughs> if, if, if it looks like shh, nobody's going to eat it. <laughs> well, that, but Cottrell spoke to the fact that, that eating is visual. It's olfactory. It's like, it is a combination of those things. And mm -hmm. I, you guys know, I do not know my way around the kitchen, but I do love interior design. And I know that that whole commitment to threes, how you balance things out and so forth. So when you said that, it spoke to me from a perspective of design, interior design, like that three is, I yeah. get it. I get well, it. I, I kind of looked at that as uh, a conversation piece also, because you got three, you got two people who are going to dinner, right? And you have three. If you say crab balls, I'm going to throw something. I'm not going to say crab balls. <laughs> you, you, you have three, you've been served three of something, scallops, <laughs> it, as you say it. And then there's one left. Doesn't that like enhance the conversation? Do you want that, honey? Or you know, would you would you like that? You know, or... it, it's like a conversation piece. Okay. okay. <laughs> She's like, I, all I right. Think that, I think you can split that scallop or split that. You know, you can kind of cut it in half and split it. No. If, if, if it's a new day, it kind of speaks to is this person the, the sharing type. Because if somebody just reached over and take and didn't ask you, you may not you may want to consider that second date, but that's a whole nother talk show. You could have just <laughs> been hungry. Huh? You could have just been hungry. Or you lose count of how many you had and how many I had. <laughs> oh, we can't be that petty, y'all. That's <laughs> what happened. <laughs> so, right, Rob, right, exactly. So I'm going to say. That's fine, right? 
<laughs> Welcome to he said, he said, he said. Okay, you can read the opinions here. Now, okay. we, count, we count the skeletons. Okay, yeah. that's where we're going on the first day. Yeah, yeah. I'm just <laughs> it does tell a lot about a person. Okay, okay. I'm yes. sorry. I'm sorry, Catrell. Yes. Excuse me, I digressed a bit. Just um, a smidge. I, just, <laughs> excuse me, Bobby. <laughs> okay, excuse me. Everything like, you know, he's like, we cannot. Okay, so we had one more. What was our third? Um, well, oh, no, our, our third is a tasting, but I don't want to get over there just yet to see they, they're playing around. I told them, I don't know if I, I told Vosh and Bobby, but Cottrell is having an event right now going on. She is entertaining clients right now in the midst of this interview. Oh wow, that's how magical she is! Come okay. on, man. <laughs> <laughs> I've well, seen, I've seen it. I've seen it, folks. It's magical when it's done at the end of the evening, right? On. Right. right. Uh, but yes, I have a um, party um, on the rooftop. Uh, it is about you know, president probably going by. I hear it. I hear it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we have um, about thirty gentlemen. Um, and they are celebrating, first of all, this is the coach for the Brooklyn Nets, and he is being inducted into the Hall of Fame, and they are celebrating upstairs on the rooftop, and it, it is actually happening. Like wow. I love but it. we have food. <laughs> wow. I love it. I love so it. if you all indulge me, I'm going to have you all sign me out, and then I'm going to go over, and I'm going to be with Chef Cottrell, and we're going to do a little taste. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't wait to see. Okay, cool. Well, look, cool. use your big words to describe everything because I <laughs> want to feel like I am tasting it with you. Look at that. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. These, okay, so. Can, you, you, can you see? Okay, well, Alvin's signing out because I think he's going to Alvin's yeah. signing out. I'm, I'm trying to leave. Oh, there you go. You got, yeah. And you got to cut yourself. Okay. Yeah. Can we see Ooh. these? Making a mess. Are those like okay. chops, like lamb chops or something? They are lamb chops. Come they on now. They are wow. a. Hey, Alvin. Hey, yeah. Oh, I can turn you up. Look now. at that. Alvin's in the kitchen with you. I thought it was me. The magic. No, it was me. It was you. Yep, yep, yep. Hello, everybody. Um, I am in the kitchen of Chef Katrino, as I told you I would be. And if you all could see the spread that she has right here, it is absolutely insane. You want to talk about yes. like, what you have here? So the chops that I just showed you guys, which are hot, I'm going to have you taste, will you? I will taste your chops. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> Help us. I'm going to I'm gonna tell those people up on the roof that one of those chops is missing since Alvin's always counting food. The crazy thing is, is like, this happens all the time, so we should, I'm just going to roll with it, right? Do you mind my fingers? No, okay. I don't mind your fingers. And my hands are clean, and so... Um, so this is a honey jerk uh, lamb chop. Wow. Okay? Drizzled in garlic butter oh, um, Lord. sauce, a, a sauce that I make like a cream. And then... Okay. Y'all, I can't even talk. And do I taste like a pickle? Yes. So there's also like a dill pickle in the garlic butter sauce. Oh, wow. To sort of cut through the richness of the... Come on, Vash. Yeah. You know, come on. You know. It's a cup This is what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm going to sit that right there. You're going to sit that there? Because okay. wow. I don't want anybody on this, on this show tonight to see me lick a bone. <laughs> And it is worthy of licking, believe me. Okay. That Especially with the lamb chop, because she Frenched the bone so that you could actually <laughs> hold on to it and I'm eat it. I don't know what he's talking about, <laughs> Frenching. Okay, so this is a garlic butter, I mean, a garlic on an onion pickle. And this will clear the palate from anything that you just had, right? I do this in my tastings, like wine tastings. Mm -hmm. so the palate. Good. I forgot I just had left. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm, I'm sure you'll remember it when you pick that, that bone up after we go off air. Uh, I, I, I took a flat. Okay. Are you guys flat or like on the wings? Um, I can go either way. I like them both. Flat. Okay. How about you, Bobby? Flat. So I know that flat is like a thing, but I'm with you, Bosh. I could go either way. It's like... It
is yeah. good is good, right? Yeah. Like, well, the textures are very different. Like one, yeah. the, the flats are a little slightly denser and, and moister, but I like the meatiness of the wing, of the actual drum. Yeah. yeah. So this chicken, <laughs> watch him. <laughs> He's looking like. I, I have a question about the chicken. I mean, yeah. I'm sorry. It is so good. Mm -hmm. I see barbecue sauce, but. No barbecue. Oh, what is it? What, what is it called? So like? it's natural herbs and spices. We use oregano, basil, smoked paprika, garlic, pepper, um, and it olive oil and um, water, and we marinate it in that, and it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And so, then what did you did you bake it, saute it? I did saute it first. That's okay. what makes it tender, and then we bake it. And these can all be on your table for the holiday. Yes, all of them. All easy. Of them. Easy, so easy. what do you call that chicken, Katrina? Mystique chicken. Mystique chicken. Write it down. Mystique <laughs> chicken. Okay? It's good. Chefcontrol.com. All right. Vasha, Vasha <laughs> I just want you to know Judy is shouting out that you are, uh, she didn't realize that you were such a gourmet, uh, uh, gourmet cook, uh, you know, chef there. That's, she's giving uh -oh. you little, little props. Judy, we have been away from each other too long. <laughs> and Judy, you will never and you will never say that about Bobby Edwards, Judy. I can promise you. I, I want to take a, a little break for those of you who are watching. We're going to do this after the tasting, but Cottrell is giving away a gift, and you got to work for it. So just stay on the show because she's going to talk to you about that. She and I'm going to have another pickle, and I'm going to clear my palate. And Cottrell, are you making? Do you make your own pickles? I do. Of Balance. course she does. Yeah. Chop Doesn't up, everyone? Chop up some onion. You're good. Okay, so what am I doing with this? Um, spinach dip. This is, so this is crab spinach dip. Oh, yeah. my Lord. I can just do this? Iron. Yes, that's yours. Personally yours. Crab wow. spinach dip. And what would you normally put that on? My tongue. <laughs> <laughs> Delicious. Wow. So, Vash, chips. Uh, a pita bread, um, pretzel bread, um, non bread, a piece of pizza. <laughs> <Still eating. laughs> yeah. Do what Alan's doing. Yeah, let him do it. Like, it's lovely to watch him enjoy while we talk about it. So, exactly. I see from presentation you have it in a cast iron skillet. So, that's a lovely presentation idea to take mm. it right to the <laughs> table, perhaps. It cooks better, too. Anything cooks better in a cast iron. Okay. Yeah. 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 And then, and then, as Vash said, it, it does make I think funky presentation as well. And Put on the board, bread, cheeses. I mean, breads, uh, chips, dimples into it for you all. This Chef Cotrell makes a mean charcuterie board too. I've seen it. It's, yes, uh, that's one of my favorite things to do because oh you can God. be creative and like you know. He's over here smacking in my ear. I am. No, oh, no. You, he, he should know that we can hear that on air. I just want yeah. you to know. We can hear that. What do we, what do we have here? We gonna... Okay, so we have done our crab balls before. I won't, I won't tease you guys anymore. I know. Chef Cottrell, there's a question right now. Is there a difference between using the pickle and using sorbet to clear the palate? Is one preferred over the other? If so, why? Thank you, Louis, for that question. That's a good question. I don't think one is better than the other. I do think that um, the type of sorbet, meaning like um, the flavor, uh, I think a lime is something that will like cleanse the palate as opposed to a strawberry or a raspberry, but you want something that's really gonna cleanse the palate and a lemon or a lime sorbet would do that. Mm -hmm. But I don't think one is better than the other, no. Wow. If you want cold or hot. <laughs> Alvin, can I ask a question very quickly? I know we, we're watching our clock. Okay, I, you, okay. Everybody who knows Bobby knows that of 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 the gifts that God has given me, cooking is not one of them. But I do love to entertain, and I do know good restaurants that. So I completely hear you, Chef Cattell. I can entertain. I'm not going to cook it for everybody's sake. Um, but if there is, if you had to recommend the simple yet impressive dish that the non-cook could possibly tackle. What would you, what would you suggest? Mm. <laughs> Crab. <Crap. laughs> no, not this, no, because that requires too much. You gotta color the spinach and measure. No, um. Mm. How about the mystique yeah, chicken? Yeah, no, because no, you would have to saute that, ah. measure your, 
I'm just going to say order, Bobby. <laughs> and and you and you've spoken to me, and I hear yeah, you. No, I'm, I'm going to be honest and just say. <laughs> no, it's look. You look. You know. Because stay you in your lane. Do a salad, right? Or, no, you you not. That's well, not always impressive. That we're going to talk about. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to say make a mean reservation somewhere. And I'm good with that. <laughs> and, and go with it. So we're, we're going to keep moving because I want to get to the gift before we let the trail go. Yeah. And if there's anything, I'm, I'm actually full. <laughs> wow. Did you I see what Cindy is saying? I'm being honest. I am being honest. Of course you're she, full. She has, she has, <laughs> she has, for anybody who's watching this show, like I said, if you come to D.C., please, please go to chefcontrol.com and, and find a weekend that you can come and partake in her brunch. There are several people who are on the, the, the our viewers who have been here. I know Alma, Rose, um, they're on the show. Um, please, you have, it is the wild factor that I can't even describe. I, I can't. And it is, it is amazing. I've been knowing this woman a long time. And so to see her put her heart and soul into what she does, it is absolutely incredible. And thank you for coming thank on the show you. and doing what you do. Let me just say this for the viewers. I, full disclosure. I am going to be at an event in about a week or so that Chef Cottrell is doing for a colleague of mine. So I'm going to get some really great pictures and I'm going to bring them back so you guys can see her work. How's that? Because that setup alone that we're about to do yeah. is going to be amazing. They I, don't I, know I, what we're talking about, but you and I know. You and I know it's going to yeah, be the bomb. Yeah. So, so that that was a touche, Bobby. Evans. I got you. I got wow. you. I, I That's right. Time. You're eating it so, now, but I'm going to be eating it soon. That's right. I, I know you're trying. So, are we? Are we? Are we going to? Can Can I show them this? Can I lift it up? Or how? Yeah. How can I, I do mean, this? let me. I'll try to lift it. How about that? How about, no, no. Because they've already given me. Excuse me. I'm right here. Can I? Can I lift it? Yes. So, uh, when you think about what's next for Chef Cattrall, um, everyone knows, uh, can, Bosch, can you remember my daughter's name? King. Yes! 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 <laughs> and it is K-Y-N-G. So, yes. um, we have House of King, right? None other than House of King. And it is all luxury kitchen home decor items. And in this particular box, uh, there will be three different boxes, but in this one, there is everything that you would need to start off with in the kitchen, all right? Mm -hmm. So we've got our rosemary infused olive oil mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. is amazing. Mm -hmm. Oh, Just leave it open. Leave it open. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. We have our luxury soy candle. We have a grapefruit, and there's also a citrus sea salt as well. Um, Alvin, I'm just going to open this up. Can so you all see this? Can you see this? Oh my God, heavenly. heavenly. Uh, if you could step closer. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a skosh. Thanks, <laughs> this There you go. Yeah, yeah. that's gorgeous. All yeah. right. And then we've got our seasoning. So this it is what we use on our chicken, our mystique chicken. It's the um, garlic, oregano, basil, um, and ground thyme. So this is part of what we used on our chicken. Okay. Um, this is... They're coming for you, Alvin. For I told you, them where you are. You. <laughs> this gift is a steal. And they're <laughs> coming for you. This is, this is our is cast iron. This is our cast iron. Um, it's a mini Dutch oven, and it's amazing. This is probably what's making the box so heavy, guys. Dutch right. ovens rule, but this, this, it is really a heavy But it's got a gold handle. Let me tell you, it's beautiful. Uh, and then this is our hand and dish soap. Um, okay. And it has, this particular one has peony um, oh. scent to it. Ooh. Um, and then if, I, I'll let you set that down. Okay. <laughs> and, okay. And, and, and Chef, can people just go to your website to order it uh, a be, similar, like a starter set? Yes, it will be up on um, December 15th. Excellent. Yeah. Yes, but hold on. But, but hold on. But the purpose of showing the gift tonight on our show, yeah. the girl is giving this gift away. So what we'd like for everybody to do, because we're going to make it hard for you, because trust <laughs> me, that, 
that was about 80 pounds in my arms. <laughs> yeah. So we need you to go to our He Said, He Said, He Said Live YouTube page and subscribe. And when you subscribe and you look at this show, put a comment in there and let us know that you're there. We're going to be doing this for the next two weeks. So believe me, you know that we are good for giving gifts away. So this is a gift that you don't want to miss. It has everything you need. Everything. We will ship it to you. And all we need you to do is go to our YouTube page, say that you've seen the show, yeah. comment, we'll know you're there, and this gift could be yours. And okay. All you got to do. That's it. Just a little bit of House of King in your house. Thank you. Okay. Do you want to so give can... people an idea of what the suggested retail value of that gift if they were to go to your website and get it because they did not win? Because Alma's asking, if she don't win, can she buy as a gift? She can. It's one forty nine. Right on. That's yeah. and that's cheap. That I mean, I don't want to say that's inexpensive yeah. for what you get. That pot alone, the candle, yeah. the oil yeah. that's infused. Uh, the hand soaps, if you were to put that together individually, that would be way more way than, more than that. Yep. So yeah. it is quite the prize for one yes. of our viewers. So yes. we want to make sure that you go to He Said, He Said, He Said live and subscribe in order to be eligible to win that lovely package from Chef Cottrell. You have to do that. So look, we have to get on with the show, but I want to thank you, thank you for having us in your kitchen. I'm going to go entertain. Hi, <laughs> Chef Cottrell. <laughs> make my way back over to my camera we're going to get ready for the pop-up so i'll see you all thank you so much. see you soon oh, chef Cottrell. thank you Cottrell. happy holidays dear bye <laughs> wow that was really exciting bobby and that looked really super tasty oh my gosh and alvin looks quite pleased you're muted which you know we would we would ladies and gentlemen that was so much fun so look <laughs> Let's get ready for the pop-up. <laughs> <laughs>
It mm. reminds me of that campaign a couple of years back when I guess it was the person with the you know the large lips, the red. You know, it was it was yeah. a, it, I think it was Gucci, if I'm not it mistaken. Was Gucci, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, and, and my thing with, with these companies, I know some of it is for shock value to, you know, to sell a product. You right. know, they, you know they, most of them can take a hit. Balenciaga can take a hit, you know, from critics and whatnot and bounce back. People will be wearing Balenciaga uh, stuff. But Balenciaga has a history. I mean, just recently, just thinking about Kanye West, and I'm going to move on to let him come to the show and wear White Lives Matter. You know what I'm saying? And mm. so... Yeah. Yeah. Who is their customer? Yeah. Who are Who, they selling to? Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And it speaks to all that. It yeah. speaks to all that. So, you know, yeah. Balenciaga, be gone right now. Okay. Be gone. Be gone. Be gone. Be, be, be gone. Be, be gone. gone. Be you have gone. no more power here. Yeah. Well, we've also <laughs> been hearing a lot about some of the uh, pop. If, if, if during our pop session, uh, we talk about culture and, and, and relationships and so forth. So there are a couple of relationships that have been in the news that I wanted to touch base on. One of them being um, a guy who I don't quite get the attraction to him, but he seems to be pretty popular with the ladies. And that's Pete Davidson, um, mm-hmm. who's currently seeing Emily Ratajkowski, this, this supermodel right now. They've been publicly out there and about. Of course, you all know that Pete Davidson was associated with Kim Kardashian most recently. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, this guy seems to be able to go around and get, here's, here's uh, Emily um, and these supermodels and so forth. And, and it's a bit of a mystery to me um, why they're so attracted to him. But she said in a recent interview that he's vulnerable, he's lovely, his fingernail polish is awesome. She said he looks good, he's great, he's a good relationship with his mother and we love him. So, that was that was one of the relationships, but the one that was more. Well, intriguing... but hold on, hold on, Bobby. I okay. also think you know because yes. he's been linked with Ariana Grande, Kim yes. Kardashian, and now this supermodel. I just think that Pete Davis Davison has a big wallet. Okay. <laughs> I'm just I'm I'm just gonna put that out there right now. The man has a big wallet, and mm-hmm. and and mm-hmm. and they all know it. So I'm sorry. You can go ahead, Bobby. I didn't mean to interrupt your your your. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> but the relationship that caught my eye, because it was a little bit of a surprise to me. If if any of you watch uh, ABC News, like I do, during the, and certainly during the pandemic, the third hour of uh, Good Morning America, what you need to know, is hosted by co-host T.J. Holmes and Amy Robach. And they both have, were married to other people. And it, and it uh, was announced yesterday that they are now in a relationship. Uh, TJ Holmes and Amy Robach of What You Need to Know. And what it, what, I think one of the things that was intriguing to me about it was the whole notion of workplace love. Let's say this relationship doesn't work out. They are co-hosts of this television show. It could be really messy. I would tune in for that. I would... <laughs> I would, the, I would, tune in, I, yeah, I, I would tune in for it. It could help ratings. Yeah. Gee, the professionalism yeah. to overcome the messy yeah. is what I would tune in to see. Yeah. Okay. I would, you know, <laughs> when, when, when his wife goes up and, you know, tries to act a fool like Angela Bassett because, okay. of, you know, you know, I mean, if she was to do that, you know, I, I would definitely turn into that station because I don't look at it. So that would be a reason for me to look at it. But it raises the question that we might discuss at a further uh, episode somewhere down the line, that whole notion of, is it even appropriate? Do you, does it, does it seem appropriate to have that level of relationship uh, at at work? Is it a conflict of interest? Yeah. Does it potentially, but that's a whole nother show. So are you trying to say you're falling for me? No. Ah, in the name (laughs) of Jesus. Okay. Ah. Look, I, what do they do? <laughs> I oh, love it. My God. I love it. But you know, grown folks, you know, it's I know it's business, but you know, you can't read them because they're grown. They're they're not doing anything, you know, and <laughs> Alma said she tuned into for that message. You know, so you know, you know let, let's see what happens. It, it will create it will create some good TV. Yeah. So yeah, let's keep uh, it moving. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Uh, well, uh, speaking of relationships and family dynamics, yes. uh, Dwayne Wade uh, has had to blast his ex-wife for blocking Zaya's name change. And for those of you who don't know, Dwayne Wade is a basketball player. Uh, he has a former wife who is Siobhan Funches Wade. They have a, a child uh, whose name is now Zaya. Zaya. Is it Zaya? Yeah. Zaya. Zaya. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. Zaya is transgender. 
yeah. and has been going through this the the transition and we've watched it over covid uh there were very few things that were really holding our attention uh but this was one of them or at least with me and over the course of the last few years Z zaya has desired to change uh their name stunning and, right and just looking really fantastic and this transition's been nice uh for them i think they're really really thriving anyway the mother, Dwayne Wade's ex-wife, mm -hmm. has uh, come in to try to block the name change and the gender change. And Dwayne Wade has had to fight this and gone to court and said that, you know, her, her allegations are libelous and nonsensical. Um, and, you know, they're just sort of going back and forth. Uh, well, part of her over. allegations also suggested that the Dwayne Wade and Gabrielle Union are kind of using Zaya's transition and capitalizing, as, and capitalizing it, like, you know, mm -hmm. publicizing it and, and getting publicity and all of that from and, it as well. Well, I would say the same thing for her, her coming out and, and, and trying to get some sort of notoriety for this. Uh, what he has said in his documents and court filings and in statements is that this woman has not been as involved in the child's life and has just right. sort of come back in during this process. Yep. And, you know, we, we talk about sex and gender all the time here. Yep. And, you know, so I want to just touch on this and clarify sex has to deal with body parts. Gender is how you show up in the world. Yep. So if this child is looking to change their gender, and even if they ultimately want to change their sex, that is still a journey that they are on. Mm -hmm. And as parents, it is important that you support your child and, and protect your child from general harm. Absolutely. And I think that Dwayne and Gabrielle are in this place where they are with this child and have watched this child grow and probably know exactly what this child needs in this phase in their life. And I just hope that they can all come together and, and work this out for the benefit of- For the, the sake of Zaya, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Well, Zaya's gonna end up resenting her mom, I have a feeling. So, you know, if her mom is, is willing to deal with that, you know, that, that, that's also something that, has, that will be considered going, going through this process and who, you know, um, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to see how, how this is, what will pan out. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But- um, We'll keep I, you informed. I, yeah, we, we will definitely keep you informed. Well, you know, we move from one household to another. For all of you Real Housewives of Atlanta uh, fans, you know, I just wanted to, you know, share this with you. Uh, last week, Portia Williams, um, she got married. She had two weddings. Uh, she married um, S Simon G G Gubadia. And uh, mm. they, you know, she left the show so that she could um, actually uh, be with this man. And now she's married him. He's Nigerian. So she had two weddings last week. This is the Nigerian wedding oh my that, gosh, uh, dress. That, that, that she had. Wow. And, 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 and then she turned around <laughs> and had an that American dress. wedding and invited all, you know, some of the Real Housewives, you know, castmates like, you know, Nene Leakes and Candy Barris, uh, Drew Sador, Cynthia Bailey was there, Kim Zosiak was even there. But um, I want to say kudos to um, Portia because, you know, Portia, Portia found a way to get away from that mess to say, I'm going to live my life and I'm going to do what I need to do. And she got a rich man in the process. So, you know, you can't eh, come on, Portia, do what you got to do. Congratulations. <laughs> wow. You know, but um, for you Real Housewives of Atlanta fans, first of all, just be glad that she's married because she was on the show without a husband. So I don't know why she was a wife, but, but you know, but, but that's a whole nother experience. That's a whole nother, being, but you, but, being a housewife doesn't seem to be a requirement to be on to the be house. on a real housewife. <laughs> exactly. exactly. But from from the color purple, eyes married now. Okay, so <laughs> oh, so, she, so 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 she's married. I'm sorry. Okay, so that that that's that's for the real housewives of um you know of of Atlanta fans. And I know we're running late on time, but I really did not want us to leave without honoring someone who we lost this past week, who really played, I think, um, uh, 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 an important role in our the Pivotal. soundtrack of our lives yeah. growing up. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. Irene Cara, who many of you remember, who rose to fame in 1980 in the mm -hmm. film Fame, uh, died this past week at the age of 63. And, you know, again, I know we're short on time, but they, the, the whole show Fame was groundbreaking in so many ways and served as an inspiration of artistic expression for so many. And Irene Cara personally starred in films like, you know, uh, Sparkle. She said that she did the soundtrack, you know, um, for Flashdance. 
Um, her, her songs included things like um, Fame, Out Here on My Own, What a Feeling, uh, as I said, the flash dance thing, the, I sing the body electric. There were so many songs. Um, and for a young woman of color to be at that level of fame and, and really like expressing her, her gifts in that way, it just, you know, it, it, she played a really important role in the soundtrack of a lot of our lives. And so we just honor and remember Irene Cara, who passed away at the age of 63. Rest well, mm -hmm. Irene Cara. Uh, and, and she was an Oscar winner. Absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. she, she, de she won an Oscar. So yeah. thank you, uh, Bobby. Thank you, uh, Vosh, for sharing that. Ladies and gentlemen, we started a little late, so we, we ran over, but we're still on time. Um, but thank you for joining our show tonight with, with Chef Cottrell. Thank you for your comments. We definitely, believe me, you want to get this gift. We want to give it to you. So please go to our um, uh, our. Uh, I'm sorry, our YouTube page, he said, he said, he said live and become a subscriber if you have not. Look, watch this show and comment because we will make sure that you, we add you to the uh, potential list of folks who could win, win this, um, this gift from Chef Cottrell. Next week, our show is I Said What I Said. Oh, Lord. And, and we're going to have, okay, we're going to have on the show none other than NNPA's Ask Alma. She's going to be here. And if you've watched Ask Alma shows, Alma has a, you know, she has a little niche for how she gets questions, but she's going to get some of our questions from some of our viewers. And, All right. And we're going we're gonna to get her, you know, her take on that. So Ask Alma will be here next week, ladies and gentlemen. Excellent. And before we close, I want to give you all the words of the week. It was from, you know, your girl, my girl, everybody's girls, Oprah Winfrey. And this is about intention. Before you agree to do anything that might add even the smallest amount of stress to your life, ask yourself, what is my truest intention? Give yourself time to let a yes resound within you. When it's right, I guarantee you that your entire body will feel it. And those are the words of uh, Oprah Winfrey, ladies and gentlemen. And we have had a great show tonight. Thank you for tuning in. Yes. I'm going to go home and take off these clothes. But um, until next week, when we, when, when, when we see you on I Said What I Said, <laughs> have a good week. And we will see you next week on He Said. He Said. He Said. Ha, we got it right this time. Okay. <laughs> good night, you everybody. Have a good week. Thank you for tuning in. Peace, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks. Thanks.